thank you all for making it to the uh, Santa Barbara Real Estate Investor Association meeting. The first we've had in like two years since the pandemic. This is actually to the month. It was 2020, January, that we had our last meeting. And I said, well, this is weird thing coming from China. We don't know really how bad it's going to be, but maybe we need to kind of get in the mode of you know, doing a different high five and not shaking hands and not hugging, not being too close because we're probably going to have to practice some social distancing and boy have we been practicing social distancing. Huh? <clears throat> and this has been really difficult for a lot of people and it's had a downside for all the people that we know that passed away and died, which is really, really bad and sad. And it's also kind of forced us into moving into the future like 20 years in advance, you know, medical, real estate, everything that was like, oh, we're going to get virtual, we're going to do this electronically, we just don't have the time and the money, and we just don't want to deal with it, and then all of a sudden it was like, well, guess what, you don't have time anymore, you have to deal with it. So it's like it pushes us into the future 20 years. So to some degree, there's been a lot of good parts about this, but we're here, we're going to make it, and I want to thank you so much for showing up here today. Um, I'm a little... Surprised and not so surprised, we had about uh, 42 people sign up to be here. And normally what we do is we charge people $10 online or $20 at the door. And when we had 42 people sign up, I looked at my wife and I said, you know, when we do that and it's free, we don't have that many people actually show up because it's like, yeah, nothing to lose. I don't know what $10 makes, why it would make such a big difference. But more people do actually show up. So we're going to go ahead and run this. It probably will have more people showing up that come in a little bit later. And that's the beauty of having our main speaker speak an hour or so down from people showing up. So that there are more people here. But the nice thing is, it's going up on YouTube. <clears throat> Everything we do, this is the Santa Barbara Real Estate Investor Association website. Everything we do goes up on YouTube. And there's very few RIAs around the nation that video everything they do in a meeting and put it up on YouTube. We do it for a couple of reasons. Santa Barbara is a small venue. People like Thad Merrill, who you may have heard of, spend $8,000 in Santa Barbara just to get a meeting going and they get a place that will handle 300 people and they might get 40 show up. So I already know it's difficult. And Doing the videos has made different speakers say, well, you know, if the videos are up there, your website's up there, pointing information back to us, you know, okay, I'll come to the, something that's got fewer people because there's a little bit more activity going on. So I just want to thank you, all of you, for being here and doing what you're doing because it's an investment in you, you know. You are your best investment. What you do in your education and putting yourself forward really makes a huge difference. So thank you very much for showing up. I appreciate that. Uh, everything up on YouTube. We are here in the uh, Marriott, which now they're calling the Residence Inn. You know, I don't know what the change was for. <laughs> but uh, it's the Marriott was courtyard, now it's the Residence Inn. Uh, it's really a, a nice venue, good place to be. <clears throat> We've even got some fresh air coming through the doors here. And uh, I don't know, we've got some coffee over here, we've got some water, a few things, uh, and a lot of empty tables. Can't believe it. <laughs> That's okay. We'll hope for more. Um, I've got uh, a few things going on here. We're going to have uh, Linda Piagas come up here in a couple of minutes and introduce herself. She does events all over the place. And she's actually the person who inspired me and said, Dan, you're running a RIA here in Santa Barbara. But you're running it in Bob's Pizza. And right in the middle of everything everybody's saying, all we hear is, Bob, your pizza's ready. And, you know, it's time to move on, Dan. So she got me, you know, to go to places like the Fess Parker, Marriott, whatever. And it's been wonderful. Thank you so much, Linda, for kicking me where I needed to be kicked to move on. Uh, we've got Jeremy Rubin, who's going to get up here and speak for a few minutes. And he is a local person doing Fix and Flip. And he's been here two or three times. And I've noticed his progression, and I've noticed his business, and it's really taken off. And I'm just happy and proud of what he's doing. So we'll have him up here in a couple minutes. I've got some things I'm going to talk about. 
And then we're going to have Lloyd. And Lloyd runs the uh, Los Angeles RIA and also the, the Ventura RIA. I just want to thank you, Lloyd, for uh, showing up. does, between him and Linda, they do some big stuff. I'll tell you, it's nice to have something small and intimate, but you really need the big stuff to make those contacts. Okay? So Linda, why don't you come on up, introduce yourself, tell us a little bit about what you're up to. Thank you so much, Linda. Thank you. Hello, everyone. Welcome. I produce Realty 411 Magazine, which is an independent publication to help real estate investors like you and I. And we're really excited about the magazine. We have free copies for everyone, so please come visit me in the back during the break so I can share our wonderful resource with you and get to know each one of you personally. Thank you. And Linda? Yes. Can I ask you, when you do your events down in Los Angeles, is it a combined effort with you and Lloyd, or how does that normally happen when you do the big ones in L.A.? Yeah, we do our own events around the country, including Southern California, and then once a year, we also do the L.A. Grand Expo with Lloyd, as well as Sam Sadat, and we combine our efforts, and, you know, they're very large events. The first one we had pre-pandemic, we had a thousand investors show up from around the country. We were really proud of that event. Uh, we held our last LA Grand Expo in 21, um, October 31st, which was Halloween. And we had 500 um, investors show up, which we were very pleased about because let's face it, it's a pandemic. Also, the venue was really strict. We had to show our vaccination card before we even walked through the door. I mean, they were really strict. So we were very pleased with the turnout. We'll have another one September 22nd of 2022 in Los Angeles. And we encourage everyone to come down for the day and get excellent resources. May I, may I add that most events of this caliber, they charge hundreds and hundreds of dollars to attend. I've seen ticket prices from, you know, $297 to $897 to attend an event like what we host for free for the public. And we do so because we really want to share our knowledge, our resources, um, and just help anyone that we can so that they can also reach the financial freedom that we enjoy. And just to let you know, I live in Solvang. Um, I own rentals in Lompoc, Los Angeles, Texas. Um, I've been a landlord over 25 years. I consider myself very blessed, so I want to share the knowledge and the resources that I have so I can help other people as well. Thank you. Thank you. Wonderful. Now I've heard, I don't know if it's true or not, but I've heard that Florida has never had a vaccination mandate or a mask mandate. Anybody know if that's true or not? Not really. Not really? Don't know? Or My main know? office is in Fort Lauderdale. And so you do know that they have mandated? or They haven't, really. They haven't? Well, it's give or take, really. I okay. mean, it just depends where you go, you know? Okay. So it's more if you want to, not so much that you have. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, so there, to answer your question, there, I believe there was not a mandate, but okay. people were implementing the masks. Because of choice. Yeah. Gotcha. Okay, cool. Wow, well, that's a lot different than California, huh? Yeah. <laughs> my, 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 my. Okay. So uh, we've got Jeremy Rubin. Jeremy, you want to come on up here and give us a rundown of what you're up to? And sure, yeah. Thank you so much for showing up. Oh, yeah, no, thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. How's it going? Good. Good. How's it going? My name is Jeremy Rubin. I appreciate uh, the invite to be here, Dan. Um, like Dan had mentioned, I've been fixing and flipping houses for a few years now. I started uh, back in 2015 and then uh, went full time in 2016, left my corporate job, and I've been doing it ever since. And uh, started with, you know, 
one here and there, a few a year, and then it got to uh, basically a point where there was always one in the pipeline, and then last year hit a point where there's now consistently 10 in the pipeline ready to go. So uh, Dan's got to kind of see that a little bit over the years, and um, I have the, uh, well, he was nice enough to invite me to come on down to uh, just share this, uh, you know, first uh, meeting back at live in person here with everybody. And um, I'm honored to be here because we get to hear today from one of the greats, uh, Lloyd Siegel himself. Um, so, uh, which is just an honor to, to be even speaking on a stage that he will be on here shortly. So, um, I fix and flip houses all over the Central Coast. Uh, feel free to think of me as a resource. Uh, if you need someone to wholesale a property to, uh, we can do that. Uh, if you have a property that you want to wholesale, uh, we also have a pretty good size buyer's list that we can help disposition a deal. Uh, we buy properties from wholesalers. We also wholesale properties to flippers. So kind of just works both ways depending on what we have on our plate, um, you know, how many deals we've got going at the time, uh, number of other, you know, business uh, as far as how it's all kind of going. So uh, that's a little bit about me. Uh, Premier Real Estate Group uh, is the name of the company that I run. Uh, we're based in Santa Maria, California. We do deals now pretty much anywhere from uh, as far north as Modesto down to Long Beach, but primarily operate Santa Maria, Lompoc, um, Atascadero, Napomo, just kind of within about an hour or so of Santa Maria. Happy to be here. You guys are all in a, a great place. And, and uh, Jeremy, uh, aren't you also a licensed realtor? I am, yes. And how long ago did you get your license? Uh, about three years. So three I'm just years. coming up on the, uh, i got to do my continued uh, education. Okay. Cut it off. So three years ago, and how long have you been flipping houses and doing the uh, fix and flip? Uh, longer than that. So I started with wholesaling back in 2014. Then I uh, did some of that. Um, kind of basically stumbled into, I didn't, I didn't really know what the heck I was doing. It was just step by step figuring it out. But uh, started as an investor, never really wanted to be a real estate agent per se. Uh, just added that to the tool belt uh, later on because I realized I could make more money listing my own properties. And uh, just opens more doors. Yeah, so, it does. It's amazing. Yeah. It's wonderful. You've just uh, impressed me, especially in the last year. That's, that's a huge amount of growth. Well, thank you, thank you. I can't take all the credit for it by any means. We have a great team. Um, the business has evolved into uh, what started as just a solo thing to um, there's a team of four of us now that run the, the main operation. We have you know, subcontractors and, of course, a lot of support from agents and title companies and all that. Excellent. Excellent. Yeah. That's great. Very cool. Yeah. Excellent. Thank you so much. Yeah, no, thank you. Thank you, guys. Jeez, I appreciate your yeah, it's not easy building teams, it's not easy getting people motivated, it's not easy doing any of this stuff, but it's all doable and we've got to do something, so, you know, he's doing a great job and I'm thoroughly impressed. So, uh, I've got a number of things going on. Uh, NHBIG is the uh, buying and selling, wholesaling properties, okay? Uh, NHB LLC is National Home Buyers uh, LLC for long-term rentals and whatnot. Personal power project going green. It's a lot of stuff about uh, you know solar, electric cars, all that good stuff. It's not a big money maker like real estate, but it's fun and it's passion and it's really, as you'll see in a couple of things here, kind of worth the time to spend there. And then some free training if you need it. Um, I want to kind of go over today as my mantra of don't ask, don't get. Now you could be don't ask, don't get. Or it could be do as, do get, or ask and ye shall receive. Whatever it is that kind of triggers you to kind of think about, I really need to start asking a lot more than I have in the past. You know, getting out of your comfort zone of asking. And that doesn't mean that you hound somebody constantly and ask them the same thing until they say, I will shoot you if I ever see you again. <laughs> you just, you know, politely ask what you need to ask in life, but start asking really more because what you start finding out is the more you ask, people are saying yes to things that you thought they would never say yes to. And it's like, oh, and then you get educated in the process, they get educated in the process, because they're, you're kind of stretching them and their envelope of what they can do and can't do. So, you know, uh, we're going to do just a quick little game here just to see how this works. 
and see how many people in here would give me $10,000 of cash before they leave here today. Now, I know, and you know, you don't have 10,000 cash, and I know that uh, I'm not really going to hold you to giving me the money, but this is going to be your way of thinking about, maybe I should just be asking a little bit more than I'm asking, okay? Um, and when you're out there negotiating, you don't have a lot of time sometimes. You miss out on things. You do things that you didn't think you would do and wonder why you did it. So, you know, you're not going to have a lot of time. I'm going to give you three seconds to make up your mind on whether you or not you want to give me $10,000 here today. So all those that do want to give me $10,000, I want you to not hold up your hand right now. Okay, I just made... One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, let's say ten, okay? What's ten times ten thousand? A hundred. I just made a hundred thousand dollars. I was hoping there'd be forty people here so I could make four hundred thousand. <laughs> but you can kind of understand why nobody held up their hand. First of all, it's like, this is really stupid, Dan. I don't want to play this game. You know, and these are just things that our mind tells us, you know? It's just what everybody thinks all the time. Secondly, I didn't give you much time to think about what you were doing here. Thirdly, most people don't want to go someplace and interact. In fact, they don't even want to go. They sign up. I would love to go to that real estate meeting. It's free. I've got nothing to lose. But when you wake up in the morning, it's like, God, it's a beautiful day. I can go to the beach. You know, why would I want to go here? Well, it's an investment in you. It's an investment in your future. And if you figure that 90% of all the people on the planet are going to die or retire broke, you people probably won't because you actually showed up. And if you keep showing up and looking for what it is that you want and making investments in yourself, that's the best investment you can ever make in your education. So, you know, raising your hand. You think, well, that's just a stupid thing, raising your hand. Just to give you an idea how you can make a mistake by not raising your hand, and now you all owe me 10000 and I'm not going to collect it. But if I see you on the street, you email me, you phone me, and I say, hey, uh, have you been asking questions above and beyond what you normally would? And you say yes, and I'll go, great, I'll extend that loan. You don't owe me the 10000 But if you say, nah, it doesn't, it's just not working for me, I'm going to say, well, maybe it's time for you to give me that 10000 Okay, because I really want you to think about it doesn't take that much more to ask. Here's an example of raising your hand at the wrong time. My wife back there, Maria, I've got my daughter next to her, Alana, and I've got my son here, Michael, doing the videos. Her mother and father were fixer and flippers back in the 50s, and they were moving homes on 154 from one side to someplace else and getting rid of them so they could get the road through, so they had an option. And her parents went to the auction, and her mother happened to go there before her father, and they were, you know, doing the whole auction thing. And finally, her father walks in, and she's like, I'm over here, I'm over here. And they said, sold. Just because she raised her hand. So, you know, if you don't raise your hand, you could owe somebody 10000 And if you do raise your hand, you might end up with a property you haven't really wanted. So you really got to kind of, you know, be on your guard and, and think about what's going on. That house at the time, they probably picked up for 12000 They probably could have gotten out of it. I don't know. Probably. Um, but they decided, we're here. We want to do it. Why not? Well, they did. They put it up somewhere around State and the Coombra. And years later, Maria and I bought it from them. And 25 years ago, whatever it was, we tried to sell it for 350000 And people said, you're crazy. We're not going to pay you, that's too much. We couldn't get it sold. So we refinanced some properties because the uh, appraisers, really, the values going down at that recession, didn't even know what the value of these properties were. They would give me an appraisal, a refinance, for more than the property was worth because people weren't paying that. Well, today, we have our daughter living there, and the house just got refinanced and appraised for $1.5 by somebody and I'm over here. <laughs> you know, stupid things happen in life, and you can turn them into good things, or you can, you know, though they could end up being bad things, and certainly we've all gone through our lessons of having bad things happen, but, you know, uh, it just gives you kind of an idea of 
if you go to court, there are people going to court over verbal agreements. And the ridiculous thing is, if you go to court over contracts, even contracts aren't much good in court. What's really good in court is, has money exchanged hands? And as soon as money is exchanged hands, that's when things get real serious in court. So, we haven't exchanged any money yet, so I think we're okay. You know? um, rent. How many people in here rent as opposed to owning their home? The same people that owe me 10000 He's raising their hand, okay. Um, rent free. There's a way to rent free. How do you rent free? ADU. What's that? I said ADU. ADU? Yeah. Yeah, there, that's a way. You know, you can get uh, extra properties onto something and bring that rental income in. If you don't own any properties and you're just starting off, you could go to a property owner, not a property manager, and say, hey, look, if I take all the responsibility of renting this place myself and I sublease tenants in here and I set the rent for them, can I increase their rent and still pay you what I owe you? And if you had enough people and the landlord was fine and you didn't have too many people, it becomes less and less you have to pay and more and more as that property turns over. So that's one way of starting off. And you think, well, yeah, I've never done property. That's a lot of responsibility. Well, the next step is owning something, and you're going to have to take on a lot of responsibility once you own something. So when you're renting, that might be a good time to start learning how to do some of that responsibility of living with people and making that work out. Home, if you own a home. How many people here own a home? Okay. So if you own a home, you know, it's a lifestyle choice. You can rent rooms out. A lot of people we know say, I would never rent a room out in my house and live with a tenant on my property. That's crazy. I just wouldn't do it. But it's a lifestyle choice. Some of our best friends that we've had over the years have been tenants that we've rented rooms out. And you can develop long-term relationships. There's that social thing that's going on and interaction that can be fun and, and interesting. And if you have bad tenants, I would recommend doing a year lease, you know, like 30-day uh, month-to-month. If it doesn't work out, you give them notice. My contracts say either party can give a 30-day notice anytime with no reasons needed. Don't like it? Don't give me a reason. Just go. Just tell me you're leaving. Give me a 30-day notice. Whatever. Okay? That's another way. Um, lease to own. If you're renting, how many people have rental properties? Okay? So if you're doing rental properties, that's a way to get good tenants. If they're putting down a $50,000 non-refundable deposit for a lease to own, pretty unlikely they're going to trash the place and leave overnight. They don't want to walk away from the $50,000. And if the $50,000 is $100,000, they're even less likely to walk away. Okay? The other thing is when you're renting out properties, I'm finding out that it's a lot better to rent out rooms in individual homes than it is to rent out the whole house to a family with kids. Anybody in here have kids? Uh, didn't you notice as soon as you had kids it was the most difficult time financially you've ever had in your life compared to when you were single or living with somebody and didn't have kids? Nobody's going to send their kids to school and say, hey look, we don't have the money, that's why they're barefoot. What are you complaining about? They're going to rack it up on credit cards or whatever it takes to make sure those kids go there and get the best they can possibly get. That's a difficult time. But if you're renting out and you have a rental, I found it much better to rent to professional single people and per room rather than a whole family. It's kind of the next step before you get to Airbnb. You know that's three times a regular rental. So that's another avenue that you can consider. Uh, wholesaling. How many in here wholesale? Well, I know Jeremy. You owe me ten thousand. You're still not raising your hand. You haven't learned your lesson, Jeremy. <laughs> so you, if you're wholesaling, it doesn't cost anything but your time. Okay, you can wholesale all day long. That's why Jeremy's wholesaling. He's fixing and flipping, but he's coming across all these deals, especially being a realtor. Why pass up multiple streams of income? Anything else that you can do, um, why not? You can help wholesalers. If you don't know enough, we've got people we're bringing on, and we're just. And my son's been telling me for years, Dad, you know so much about this stuff that you train people 
but it's so complicated what you try to train them that they just give up and go away. You need to reduce this down to the easiest possible thing to get them started. So what we do now is we say, hey, you want to work with us on wholesaling? I'll give you 10% of the profit. There's only one job you have to do. Go out there on Craigslist or go out there on the MLS and look for properties that are depressed, that need to be repaired. Don't look for these beautiful things. We can't do anything with that. Look for something that needs to be repaired. We'll make an offer on it. If we can get it under contract and we can sell it, whatever my profit is, I'll give you 10% just for looking for that stuff and getting it back to me. That's an easy, simple place to start. And you can work with investors doing something like that. Um, ROI, repairs. Okay, so here's another thing on the wholesaling side. I kind of see it as three possibilities. One, we could pick up a property that needs to be repaired and we could put it right back onto the MLS and wholesale it and make a profit without doing any repairs at all if you have enough spread in there. I can get it on the MLS as not a realtor because I'm not, I'm just an investor, but I'm still thinking about getting a license someday, maybe if I really feel I need to for whatever reason. But I can put it on the MLS without being a realtor and I can get it on there without a listing fee and I can sell it without a buying fee Has you know have somebody come to me direct and if they're coming with a realtor I can say no or I can say well sure it's your buying agent you hired them why don't you pay them don't ask don't get and if the deal's good enough if the money works for the investor, the investor is going to say, sure. I found that more investors work with real estate agents on the MLS than they ever do on Craigslist. And Craigslist is great for renting rooms, but when you start trying to do business on Craigslist with buyers, sellers like, you know, for sale by owner, they're there all the time. But when you're looking for buyers, most serious buyers aren't going to Craigslist to find something to buy. They're, they've got their realtor out there, they're buying an agent, and they're doing this stuff. And if the deal's good enough, and you tell the agent, okay, go back and tell your buyer, you're gonna, he's gonna have to pay you, or she's gonna have to pay you, and we'll do the deal. If the numbers work, they're gonna say yes. So don't ask, don't get. Do ask, do get. It just, so many, you know, weird things that you, I mean, even some of these wholesalers that I think we were talking about said, well, Dan, if you do this, you're gonna have to find a, a real estate agent and give them $500 to close a contract because we can't give it to you any fee because you're not a real estate agent. And I said, well, my, my investor really doesn't want me doing things like that and they're willing to pay me even when escrow closes for bringing them a deal, 5,000 bucks. Not that big a deal. After I said that, the wholesalers that you guys are familiar with said, well, you know, what we could do is we just could put that 5,000 fee on the buyer's side and let them pay for it because the price is still going to be the same. And I went, well, now that's some creative thinking. That's great. Okay. Don't ask, don't get. You're stretching their mind to think about things they haven't thought before. And if it's legal and it's okay and everything's contractually, you know, the way it should be, things can happen that you just never would expect to happen because you just haven't been asking. So I'm just without trying to drive people crazy, you know, and being annoying, I just keep asking and asking, okay? <clears throat> okay, so uh, I'm just gonna real quick go through this stuff because I'm gonna get Lloyd up here, but I just wanna say NHBA, if you go to the website, any one of my websites, if you go to the contact page, we'll show you all the other things that I'm doing, okay? That's the website for Fix and Flip. That's all the training stuff. Uh, this is NHB LLC, long-term rentals, the advantage of doing lease to own, uh, single family home rentals and renting rooms, information there, Santa Barbara Computing Services, I run that too so that, you know, we can help people with their computer issues as they're trying to build their business up and do whatever. And then the personal power project, uh, that's going green, I'm an affiliate with uh, Tesla and, you know, can give you a discount. This is not a big money maker, but there are people who spend a lot of time on YouTube and actually got like two or three of their top in sports or whatever it is, you know, for free. Um, solar, I leased, well, on the batteries, I recently got $40,000 worth of batteries for free. You just had to be in the right place at the right time and ask the right questions, and I got it. And it's lasted about six months, and they shut the program down and said, well, we're not doing that again. Dan came to us and said, 
they're free? And I, they said, yeah. And I said, well, I want one. And I said, well, why wouldn't you want one if they're free? And I said, well, because if they're free, I don't want one, I want three. And they went, well, excuse me, well, we'll see if you qualify. Well, I did. And there's the uh, Edison, the check for Edison. Okay. And then solar, we got solar about 10 years ago, something like that. Well, guess what? The solar broke. It was on a lease. And I called them up and said, it's not working. They said, oh, we're going to come out there. We're going to replace every, every solar panel you got. Wow. And I went, yeah, how long is that going to take? They came out within a couple of weeks. They replaced 30 solar panels in two hours. It didn't cost me a dime because it was on a lease. So what did that do? That just extended the time that my solar should last another 10 years. If they last 20, and I'm already through 10, now for the lease price I paid, I got a 30-year guarantee, basically, because that's how long they're going to last. Okay. And electric cars, well, everybody knows what's happening with electric cars. They're coming out there, but guess what? People don't really see and understand that these are not just cars. They're your mobile power station that's going to get you off the grid because this solar isn't enough to get you totally off the grid in the worst of times. But if your car can power your house for three or four days and the car starts to lose the power, you just make sure the batteries have enough so that you can drive your car downtown or someplace where you can get into a fast charge station, fill that thing up, bring it back home, plug it in, you got another three or four days. That's going to get you off the grid. It's still going to be cheaper than gas or anything else. Okay? And that's about all I will say. Uh, somebody that has worked with me in the past, got some money, you know, a little testimonial. And that's it for me. And now we've got uh, Lloyd coming up. So uh, if you've got any questions, all that stuff up there, and on some of the handouts is my cell phone number. Just text me. Just say, hey, Dan, I want to do this, or I want to do that, or do you know this, or do you know that, and I'm here for you, okay?